What is going on, everybody? Bobby Pye with my man, Eric Sheets Haber. We're going to be talking through tonight's two-game play-in slate. Uh, the, it's it's really fun to have basketball when it's meaningful and you know the guys are going to get minutes. You can, like, even the minutes in the industry, you could probably give a bump up on some projections here. It will really be a, a, a big one, on not, not not for the other play-in games, but for the the last play-in games when, the, when these, the loser of these teams plays the other one for the final spot because that's sort of – you know, that's your last gasp for the season to try and make the playoffs. And obviously at this point, all these teams are trying to make the playoffs. So Sheets, what are your sort of any overall thoughts or you just want to jump right into the game? The game? By yeah, game? we'll jump right into it. Just so you guys know, we, we, we started recording before and my, my camera failed. So we had to start over and I was confused because Bobby was about to, he was starting to talk about how there's some concentrated chalk and, and I, I don't know who that is. So, so I'm very curious to see, uh, to see where, how we go through this game by game breakdown. Now you were you were already starting to talk to me about about the your outlooks on the games. Why don't you go over that again? Yeah, I I, I do like I, I I do think Brooklyn wins this game most of the time. Like, but I don't know if the the spread is not something I'm probably going to want to touch. Um, it just feels like a little too much, and it's strange to take the you know the, with Brooklyn because I you know I I don't I, I they might they might turn it around and have an incredible run in the playoffs or whatever, but I just don't think they're that good of a basketball team. And even when these guys have been playing minutes and stuff lately, like I'm sorry, it, with, with their guys desperately trying to win and all that, I, I don't know. It's, it feels like a little, a little strange to me. Like, they, I mean, they beat, they did beat this Cleveland game in a game that mattered by, by 11 last time. So, okay. That's something they had a really struggle with Indiana on in the last game of the regular season. They struggled with Houston. They lost to Milwaukee. They struggled with Detroit. They, they, they haven't really like been playing the way that I feel like they should be a 10 point favorite against almost anybody, but it is a big game. And I do think they probably pull it out. And I think that the Minnesota is probably, probably should be a little bit of a bigger favorite against the Clippers, even though I think both of these teams could actually scare the hell out of their second round opponent. It's probably less so with Phoenix, but definitely in the case of if they, whoever wins this game in terms of playing Memphis, could, I think definitely give them a scare. Um, hey, can you, can you, you do me a favor for those, for those certainly wouldn't be me, but for those people who are not completely familiar with the play and situation, of course, I know everything about it. Uh, not really. Um, so what does it work with these four teams? I mean, is it, is it just one and out for both these teams? No, no, no. The winner, the loser, the loser plays the winner of the nine, 10 seed for the, to, this is for the seven seed. The next one, if they lose, they'll be playing for the eight seed. Okay. So you got to lose two games from here to be out. Yeah. Okay. This just just in this case, not for anybody else. Just these two. These two. Just okay. these. All right. Yeah. Um, all right. So let's uh, let's let's uh, let's go ahead and get started. What I did, by the way, I did up go to some projections or whatever, and and I um, I ran some uh, some lineups to see what I would get, and I am getting like seventy five percent of one particular guy, and I'm curious to see if that's the uh, the guy who we think is going to be chalky. I I don't know. We'll see what see what see what see what everybody likes. Yeah. All right. Well, let's start it off then. And why don't you start off with your thoughts on, on the Cleveland Brooklyn game, but maybe stick to one side at a time, just because we only have four, four different teams to talk about. And then we'll go I, back and forth on that. Yeah. So the, I guess I'll start with the Brooklyn side. I mean, Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving are both priced pretty healthy. Um, one's at 12 K and one's at 10, seven. And my initial builds are not preferring them. Um, I, I'm actually preferring stuff from the other game um, as opposed to this one. Uh, the, 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 the one guy from, I mean, the guys from the Nets that I'm really getting to are more value guys. So I'm getting like a, a good amount of Bruce Brown. Yeah, he's going to um, be probably the most popular player on the slate. Yeah, I mean, I got him at, I don't have him the most. I mean, I have him at like 50, 55%, not two games slate, you know, whatever. Yeah, we'll see. Um, and so I have that. And then the other guy, I mean, a little bit of Drummond, I suppose. Uh, I like that. And those are really the two guys I am, I'm getting, except for what I have as my highest known guy is Seth Curry. Um, so I don't know what's going to happen with that or where that comes from. I don't know why, because his price and his and his his multi his every position eligibility maybe gets me there with him, but that's what I'm getting right now is him at 4,400. Presume he plays, obviously. I presume he plays. Yeah. Um, that's my highest on guy right now is the Seth Curry. I'm not getting too much of the spend ups. Um, 
And then on the Cleveland side, uh, my highest owned, and I'm getting about 40% of uh, Evan Mobley and, and, and Arkin. And those are really the only two guys I'm getting anything of. Yeah, I think that's going to be common. It's really hard to find ways to save. So the guys who I have are, are similar. I, I have Curry Brown as the priorities on Brooklyn. I, I don't know the Curry thing. I feel a little like worried that, well, I think he's being under projected. Um, yeah, I don't know how he's projected to score 18 fantasy points. I think it's maybe because he's sort of injured and they're trying to figure this out. Um I, I do like Curry. I do like Brown. I think Curry, you know, you see him projected for 20 some odd minutes throughout the industry. I think that could easily be a lot more depending on course how it goes, but I, I do like the Curry and Brown and I like a uh, on the other side, the guys who, you know, I also want to mix in are Mobley. Um, I think Darius Garland is a fantastic play. <laughs> um, I don't know if I'm going to end up with him, but I do think he's a really good tournament play. And if you don't want to play those guys, the Levert thing is going to be something people do. And that's completely fine. We don't need to talk about revenge because this game means more, too much than more yeah. than revenge. Um, but I think Kevin Love is like the sneaky play you could Ooh, use here. Okay. And we've seen his minutes sort of go fluctuate. First of all, he doesn't need all the minutes in the world. Second, there's nothing else to save this guy for. Okay. Like they are better with him there. He's usually closing. Not always. There's sometimes on the stretch, they didn't close him. I mean, this guy put up 55 fantasy points in his last game and he did it in 14 minutes. How do you even do that? He had 32 real life points in 14 minutes. That's crazy. Um, he had eight threes in 14 minutes. These are really incredible things. He had 10 rebounds in 14 minutes. Um, but just as a guy who can produce, if they do end up, you know, going some direction to give somebody some extra run, I do think Kevin Love is going to be the, the, the high upside guy at 6K that you can take shots on. Um, I think on the other side, Claxton's going to end up being popular, but I just, I don't know. It's very strange what they're doing with the rotations and stuff in general. So I don't, I don't know with Brooklyn, but Claxton, I get it as a value save. I would rather play a Coro and be safe with the minutes on, on Cleveland because a Coro who's going to play, he's projected to play 30 minutes or whatever. I think they're going to want him out there guarding Kyrie or KD pretty much all the time. Cause none of these other guys can guard those guys. Not one other player on their team is even like a competent, somewhat competent defender enough to guard these guys. Um, not to say that Garland's bad. It's just, it's, it's not a picture. You don't want your guy who's your entire offense guarding Kyrie. So I really like the idea of trying to get different with Kevin Love, Drummond. Um, because again, I don't, I don't necessarily feel sure about these minutes for Claxton at the same time, he could easily end up out playing Drummond by a bunch and it wouldn't surprise me either. Uh, but I, I do think it's worth it taking a shot on Drummond just because of how productive he can be. And I don't know. I, so, so those are my sort of get weirder plays. My favorite of them being Kevin Love. I am going to play Alec. I'm going to play a Coro though. You really need value. And the 3,500 is, is hard for me to resist for a guy who I think is going to be on the court a bunch. I don't care how unproductive he was in their in previous meetings or anything like that. He's 3,500 and there aren't, there's no other values for guys that could end up playing like 35 minutes at 3,500. I'm just going to take that all day on these kind of slates. And as far as KD and Kyrie go, of course, they'd be nice to play these guys. Um, it's, it's, it's just hard to find the money. And, and like I said, it's hard to find the money for Garland as well, unless we do get some injury news, which we, by the way, did just get in, like we don't have in the next game, little Luke Kennard, it's not going to make a huge difference, but it does go to show you that we're not, we're not totally done here yet. Um, I like Durant. He would be my pick a little bit over Kyrie, but it's pretty close. And uh just feel like he's got more routes to get there. I just think I'm, I'm probably going with the other guys and probably spending up with the, the Clippers in Minnesota with the exception of the Kevin Love, Evan Mobley, uh, medium spend-ups that I like from Cleveland. What do you um, – you think we can, you can get any uh, minutes or meaningful minutes out of Gordon Dragic in this game? It's – I don't know how he – how. Yeah, you okay. Know, I just figured. If Steph is out – if Steph is out. Oh, okay, okay. I mean, I, I've got him play, projected to play. People have him 18 and I see 20. I think it's probably more like 12. Okay. Um, may, may, it could be more. I mean, if they're struggling with something else or anybody gets in foul trouble, he'll be the first one there. And if he plays well, he'll stay on there. But like, do I either of these teams, do either of these teams have to play back to backs or no? There can't be a back to back. There can, no, no, no. Like if they win or lose, I mean, they don't play their next game the next day, right? Just out of curiosity, why would it, let's just say they did hypothetically? How would that be relevant? I'm just curious. I really, I'm, I'm curious. 
Because I don't know, like if a team is 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 um, nobody's going to rest anybody. No, I'm not resting, but like if the game is uh, is 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 like a 20 point game or something, they could try to rest people. You know, I don't know. Maybe if it was 30 plus, I don't know. 20. I don't know. Is okay, I'm just, you know. I don't know. Just, I'm just throwing my things out. Um, but no, they don't. I, the, the next okay. game. Um, not uh, for two days at least. Okay. Yeah, it's too, it's, yeah, that's what they do. Okay. Yeah, it'd be kind of crazy to not do that actually. Um, I'm just double checking that I'm right because I. Would have I wouldn't have it wouldn't have occurred it to me matter too much so I mean I figured I would just ask yeah no 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 I just thought it was like I'm just trying to make sure that I'm not missing something here because that if, if if for some reason I'm wrong I the NBA I don't know what the hell they're doing but it is possible that they could have changed that up I don't I don't understand I sort of go against their message but I'm just gonna double check yeah because they no they can't because the other teams have to play <laughs> yes what am I thinking oh, right, okay. brain, yeah yeah so they don't play again until Friday okay these teams um so, uh, so that's what we got. So that's what I've got for the first game. So Clippers and Minnesota sheets. What are you looking at here? Well, let's start with, what do you think of Paul George? Yeah, I think it's interesting, but like, if you, of course, seems like a good play, you know, going to need him, all this stuff, but like versus Garland, who probably even has more of the offensive responsibility than George does versus Kyrie at a little bit more expensive versus uh, Carl Anthony Towns. I think they're all pretty close. Um, I, I, I do like Paul George for what it's worth, but I don't think there's anybody, I don't think anybody could safely say, Hey, these guys are significantly better than the other guys are. Uh, I do think that, that both these teams are desperately going to try and win this game. And I think Paul George's minutes being projected at 36 or 38 or whatever the people are going to project. And then you can put a bump on that too. Um, if the game is close. So there is upside of 40 plus minutes and that would change his projection to probably being the best of those guys, but it's no guarantee that it happens. It has to depend on the game flow, obviously. And, and, you know, you're going to, you have right now what projects to be a really popular Reggie Jackson. I like Reggie. I'm a Reggie Jackson defender in general. I, I think this feels like too much ownership on him and too high of a projection for him what I'm looking at. So I, I definitely want some piece of, of this game if it's, you know, high and tight and a, a close game. But it's, it's hard to figure out exactly who we want here. Uh, if I wasn't playing Paul George, I guess it would probably be Morris or you gamble that Norman Powell is going to be allowed to play the more than 22 minutes. And I think he might, but I don't feel it's hard to feel incredibly excited about any of these guys. If you want to know the truth, um, except for maybe Paul George. So that's why I'm ending up with some Paul George, but I don't think individually like versus all those other guys that he's much better. I just don't think he's much, I think he's close. Like my current, my current numbers, my current runs have cat as the best play of, of the whole slate. Um, Mm -hmm. uh that that's where i'm at with that and then at behind him I mean, i'm getting just a bunch of d'angelo russell so those those are the, just the two guys and my my top clipper right now is um is marcus morris just mm -hmm. not the way on lineup construction you know what i mean like not the best play obviously but the way the lineups are shaking up i'm getting probably most of him um so it's basically you know i'm getting value out of the seth curry's and marcus morris's and bruce brown's or whatever and and uh and jared vanderbilt um, he's, he, you know, he makes, he, he, he's some good salary relief. I think, um, he's going to be, I think he, I think I have him as the most popular player on the slate actually, <laughs> um, uh, at, at 3,900. So we'll, we'll see how that, we'll see how that plans pans out. Um, and that's pretty much it. So for me, like Kat's going to be the, the guy I probably have. I have him as the second most popular player on the slate in Vanderbilt. Um, I think you're, I think it's a really, really bad if you're playing 20 lineups to have Vanderbilt in more than half of them. And he's probably going to be 75% owned projected. I, these minutes are absolutely not secure. Um, uh, Jaden McDaniels is going to get run as well. Uh, they don't need to play big like that. Beasley, they're going to give some minutes to. It's going to, he could end up getting like 30 minutes, but he also could end up getting 10. And there's a lot of guys like that here. Like Beasley could get 24, but he could also get 10. Right. Uh, Dorian Prince could get 16. He could get also five. Get zero, um, right, exactly. Nas Reed could get five. Uh, Jordan McLaughlin could get zero. Th 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 these are, you know, so I'm going to take all that and put it into the guys who are good point per minute, who I think are under projected for minutes. And I think Patrick Beverly is being under projected for minutes at 28. Okay. Um, again, it's a game flow related. So it depends on how, what's yeah, that's a, that's a game that he's going to play minutes. I mean, like this is a, yeah, it's just a foul trouble issue. And if they're playing better with McLaughlin, than they are with him. That's really the only way it goes the other way. Or they use Russell and then they play Beasley at the two. That's the only thing that could, could sort of stop them, you know? Um, but I do like Beverly and I like Towns. I'm a little, 
a little interest, a little not gonna. It's a little weird to me that everybody's on him. Um, I don't know how I feel about it to be honest with you. I think it's a little strange because I don't see him as being much different than Kyrie. Um, it is a good matchup. I don't see him being much different than uh, uh, Garland. I think I would rather not. I mean, I might end up with Towns in some lineups. But I, I think I might, my, my first thought is to try maybe not to play Towns. Um, and I, uh, you know, play Beverly, uh, maybe play, maybe could maybe play uh, uh, D'Angelo Russell or Anthony Edwards, but probably skipping the Towns for me at the, at the such high ownership when his price tier, I don't see him as being better than by much, if at all. So I'll tell you who, uh, I'll tell you who I've been, been drawn towards through this discussion. Um, and just, you know, partially projection, but, you know, it's a two-game slate, so projection could be whatever. Um, and just on my eye test and things I've noticed over the year and knowing who they're playing against, the more you mention it, the more I really I really like that Garland play. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that he's going to be – look, everybody's going to be owned, right? But but I think that against Brooklyn in what, what could be a what could be a big, big total. Um, I've seen him take over games, man. And, and I know that Levert can has, you know, has whatever, but I think in a playoff style game, I, I think, I think he's got the keys, you know what I mean? <laughs> and, and, and I think that, that he can really, really have a big game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I, I think everybody, I, I hear you. Um, it's really interesting to see what Cleveland does with their rotations here, because basically anybody gets into foul trouble. Yeah, the, Garland's the one guy you feel really good about on their side. Cause I, I, I didn't mention marketing before because he's pretty popular. He's going to be really popular as well, but I, I, I sort of like that. That's why love will be, I think really low owned. And I like the idea of trying to get Garland or love in there. Um, yeah. I, I think it's a good, I think it's a, a good call or, or Mobley. I mean, I, I do really like Mobley too. I think Mo, Mobley could have a, a really, really big game here uh, against this Brooklyn team. He played well against them the other night, put up 38 fantasy points in 33 minutes. Um, another guy whose minutes could go higher than he's being currently projected for, but um, yeah, I, I think it's interesting. I, I do like love the, my, my off, off, you know, off the board ones are, 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 are low or owned would be love Drummond um, as my two favorites, but it's, it's, it's tough to get the low ownership on the two gamers here. So I'm going to try and take some shots there. I, I do think that this uh, Coro thing is kind of interesting to me because I see speculation about, Coro probably will lose minutes to Levert. I'm like, well, they've been playing at the same time. And I don't know, man. Like, wouldn't you want to have your best defender on the court when you have Kyrie and KD on the other side? I <laughs> that that good idea. <laughs> it just makes sense to me. I mean, if I was the coach, go out there and score no points. He'll accidentally work his way into some. But And he's so bad point per minute. But it's like, we need a cheap play. There's no other cheap play that's going to play like this, this cheap. It's going to play like 20 minutes. He's going to play 30 at least, I think. Right. Um, so I don't know. That's what I would do. He did have five fantasy points last time these teams played in 28 minutes. So he's not a fun roster, but well, again, I mean, but now by the way, neither is Jared, Jared Vanderbilt. Like he's got a huge range of outcomes when every time he plays and it's not just attached to minutes because they have a lot of other things. He doesn't really do much on that team except for defend and rebound. Um, anyway, so it's going to be an interesting fun slate. We'll touch on it when we do our live show for yes. baseball. Yep. And uh, it should be a fun night in uh, the DFS world, as, as if we haven't had enough of them lately. There's been a lot of fun. Sounds good. Hopefully, everybody plays. Yeah. All right, guys. Good luck to everybody. We'll see you at 6 Eastern. Okay.